Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from ASUS featuring a new socket from AMD. This is the AM1M-A. Now the new socket from AMD is AM1 as you can see listed right there and this is for a new series of APUs uh, codenamed Kabini. These are actually SOCs or system on a chip. Previously they've only be, been available as BGA or ball grid array soldered on chips uh, for all-in-one solutions where you get the motherboard as well as your APU together. But now you can purchase a motherboard with an AM1 socket and then you can get an AMD Kabini series APU which should be available uh, at the same time as this motherboard. Uh, drop it in there and then not only do you have a working system but you also have an upgrade path uh, thanks to that uh, switchable socket. Now uh, this particular motherboard features a lot of features that uh, we will we have seen in the past from ASUS so uh, solid build quality, stable power control over current protection, electrostatic discharge protection, high quality uh, solid caps as well as stainless steel, black I.O. on the back for a bit of a, a bit of extra bling or aesthetic appeal. Uh, here on the back you can see a little bit more information about some of those features. You also get stuff like the ASUS UEFI BIOS. Uh, you also have USB 3.0 boost which can increase your USB 3.0 transfer speeds, AI Suite 3 and the ASUS EPU. Over on this side we have a, 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 a smaller or a blown up shot of the board with the some more specifics pointed out here and there. I'll be pointing those out when we get into this as well. Then we have some detailed features listed right here. So one thing you might notice here, for chipset, it is actually built in as part of the APU when you purchase it. So a Sempron or Athlon series, codename Kabini APU, which will slot into this board, actually has that chipset or the elements that would be part of the chipset built in. Uh, now, Kabini is uh, actually designed for AMD uh, for market regions that have lower GDP, or at least that's something that they've stated in the past. So this is really a very, very budget-friendly board, also a very power-friendly board, uh, this platform as a whole. Um, users in these markets have asked for really low-cost systems, but also maintain upgradability, so that's a, a feature here. And uh, I also want to point out that AMD is not really uh, seeing these systems to be used with anything other than a low-end discrete graphics card. You, of course, have a, a GPU built in as part of your APU, um, but uh, as far as the lane support, you have uh, four-speed PCI Express lanes on this board which means you're not going to get a ton of performance if you're trying to get this as a low-cost low platform and then go with a, a high-end or even a mid-range graphics card. So uh, this isn't really designed for a gaming platform. I know we have a lot of gamers who watch our channel. This is more for a low-cost, low-power solution. It's x86 compatible, and you can uh, go with 32-bit and 64-bit standard operating systems that are available, such as Windows. Of course, you also have uh, memory slots, two DIMM two dim slots. You can actually do DDR3 1600 speeds. That is single-channel memory. Uh, the APUs will have up to four Jaguar x86 cores, and they also have GCN architecture built in with 128 streaming processors, so pretty nice. You also have uh, SATA 6 gigabit per second port uh, ports available, uh, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, and uh, for outputs, well, they're going to vary by motherboard, so let's just continue along here. Uh, but there's your expansion slots listed right there, as well as your storage, USB, LAN, and audio. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories. We have the motherboard itself, of course, and then a fairly standard array of accessories included. So you have a couple uh, serial ATA cables right here. This is gonna be, these are going to be SATA Rev 1, 2, or 3 compatible. One of them has a 90 degree L bracket. The other one has straight plugs on both ends. Uh, we also have your user's guide, of course, for the AM1M-A. They've included an AM1 series uh, driver disk, so you can use that to install drivers, but it's usually best to go to the ASUS website to download, di download them directly and uh, get to the newest ones that are available. And then finally, we have an IO shield. Pretty straightforward here, not a whole lot. Again, this is a budget series board, uh, but next up, let's look at the board itself. Now the motherboard is brown and yellow in color, which blends pretty nicely if, you, if you're into the aesthetics of the board. Uh, but you're probably not so much interested in that if you're going for a budget board like this. But uh, apart from that, you might notice the form factor. It is micro ATX by spec, however it is a uh, truncated width micro ATX. So actually it measure, measures just shy of 7 inches wide, which is actually mini ITX width-wise. So that could give you some interesting options uh, depending on what case you might want to use. But it does sort of uh, shrink down the board a little bit and give you a bit of extra space. Uh, and it's really only using the space that it needs. Uh, apart from that, we have a brown PCB. And flipping around here to the back, we can see there are no active or uh, there are no uh, passive heat sinks on this board at all, so nothing to maintain there. But we do have a new mounting uh, or a new mounting standard here for the AM1 socket, so that is something that you should bear in mind. Uh, you should get a stock heatsink fan uh, if you're going with a Kabini series APU. Um, 
but it's not going to be compatible with uh, older or other existing uh, AMD sockets. So just something to keep in mind as well. Uh, now going over the board in a, more, a little bit more specifically, I did want to point out we have a couple fan headers. Uh, single, which is right up here at the top, that's your CPU fan header. And you have a single chassis fan header, which is located right there above the PCI Express slot. Let's go down to the bottom because we have a lot of pinouts here and I wanted to go over those. We'll start in the lower right. And just to point out, we have front panel headers via that yellow block right there. There is a power LED that will indicate when there's power going to the board. Trusted platform module header, which is sometimes used in enterprise applications. Also a speaker header. If you have a speaker, you can uh, drop it on there. There's a clear CMOS jumper right there and a couple USB 2.0 headers for standard USB 2.0 connectivity. You also have some legacy support here. So there is a COM header and then you also have a uh, parallel or a printer, it's often known as a printer header. So if you have uh, older hardware, and that is uh, often the, the hallmark of uh, the more budget series boards, you're trying to stretch your hardware out and get as much use out of it as you possibly can. And uh, the printer header is sort of maintaining that. So if you have an older printer, you can keep using it. We also have a SPDIF uh, out right there for audio as well as standard front panel audio jacks to the left of that. Uh, apart from that, we also have some PCI Express connectivity, as mentioned earlier. Um, you are limited to PCI Express Gen 2 4-way, which should be plenty for the use cases that this board will be used with. We do have a full physically 16x uh, or x16 length slot right there, but you can see it's wired up for x4. Um, so you can run that at x4, or you can also have a couple x1 uh, slots available below that for PCI Express X1. So you can add on a graphics card potentially here again, but you probably want to stay with lower end, more budget cards. Uh, but then you've got the single slots below that for some extra connectivity. Moving on, oh, actually, before we move on, I should point out we also have a USB 3.0 header, which is located right there up above the PCI Express uh, Gen 2 slot. Over on the right side of the board, we have a couple serial ATA ports. Uh, that's SATA 6 gigabit per second, so you can connect faster uh, hardware such as SSDs to that and make use of their full speed. Above that, you've got a 24-pin main motherboard power connector. Uh, and then to the left of that, you have your memory slots. So again, this is just standard DDR3 memory slots. Bear in mind, it is single channel, so you're not going to be able to make use of dual channel bandwidth. However, you have uh, support for uh, official support from AMD for speeds up to 1600, but you can potentially make use of 1866 speed memory, which can give you a nice boost on your APU's performance. Uh, the APU socket itself is located right there, and that is your AM1 socket. Again, it's not going to be uh, backwards compatible with any of the other sockets that are available, as this is a new socket from... Uh, AMD, um, but you do have an a, a APU compatibility list that will be available from the ASUS website if you're interested in checking out which APUs specifically in the Athlon and Sempron series that uh, can be so slotted into this board. And of course, they're going to have varying levels of performance, um, and, and usually the more expensive ones are faster. Uh, but above that, we have a supplemental CPU power connector right up there, so just a standard four pin for that for a little ATX 12 volt extra juice for the APU. And then moving on to the IO, which is right here, um, we have a PS2 header right there. So again, maintaining a little bit uh, of legacy support, mouse or keyboard combo port, so you can use either one. Uh, also a couple of USB 2.0 ports there, a couple more USB 2.0 ports over there. So four total available on the back here, plus four available via internal headers. Uh, since you're using an APU, it does have an integrated GPU with GCN architecture. Um, so you do have an HDMI out right here. You could potentially actually do up to 4K resolution out of this, uh, although you will be limited to 24 hertz, and that is dependent on the APU that you slot into the motherboard. So um, if you are looking for 4K for movie playback or that sort of thing, uh, definitely double check uh, the APU that you're choosing to make sure that you have support for that. You also have a dual link DVI out as well as a VGA out and uh, the DVI-D and the VGA can do resolutions up to 1920 by 1200 at 60 hertz. I should mention that the HDMI can also do 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. Um, it's just at 4K you, you have a slightly lower frequency that is available. Um, you also have a couple USB 3.0 ports here, so that gives you a total of four available, two via the internal header and two via available here. Uh, you also have an integrated NIC, that's a Realtek 8111GR PCI Express gigabit LAN controller. And finally, you have uh, audio support, so there's your analog audio jacks. For audio, you have a Realtek ALC887 8-channel high-definition audio codec, and it supports jack de detection, multi-streaming, as well as front panel retasking.
And one last little tidbit of information for you guys, the Kabini APUs can actually control two USB 3.0 ports. So those extra uh, two USB 3.0 ports on the rear I.O. Asus added on by way of an extra as media controller. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. This has been the Asus AM1M-A motherboard featuring the, FM, the AM1 socket for AMD's new Kabini APUs. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and we'll see you all next time.